Well, hello there, YouTube. It's Monday, May 27th, 2024. And in this video, I'm going to remove the tank strainer as well as the fuel tank. You'll find out that by removing the fuel tank, it's easier to remove the fuel strainer. And in some instances, it's the only way that you can do it. Uh, it's not that difficult to do. So let's just get started. I've got two cameras set up so you can see this side, which is the left rear, and over here is the right side. You see that I got a couple little stains on there. As far as I know though, these are original. You can see these bolts down here. What do you, what do you think's inside of here, you guys? It's a tire, <laughs> but look, it's one of the big one, 16 inch. So that way there, if you get a flat or something like that, everything is good. Battery is out, and that's got a couple of clamps on that. That'll come out. I've taken this one here out before. Surprisingly, this foam backing is not completely deteriorated, like I would think here in Arizona. But there's actually nothing wrong with this panel other than it's dirty. Let's see what we got here. So it's glued on. Looks like someone's already peeled that away for us, so that's... That's good. That looks really clean, you guys. Here's the bracket for the strap and the cover for the battery tray. And that's 10 millimeter down there. Loosen that one. You want to bet that those are 10 millimeter? They are. go. All right. I'm going to go ahead and just put these things back in here. And I'm going to take each one of the nuts. And then that other one was on top of that. Uh, this actually, these are nylocks. If you guys want to know, this is a nylock. So I'll be replacing that. Something you're going to need. These are actually genuine Mercedes nylocks. I have a toolkit which I don't have sitting in here. I have that inside the house. And believe it or not, I have the original spare tire, all the rims, I have all the original rims. It's this panel with all these 10 millimeter, everything's 10 millimeters. Oh, look at that, there's one missing right here. So why would someone have taken that out before? Hmm, interesting. They don't just fall out. Oh, you know, Mike from Mike's Mercedes, you know, he's, he's in my channel list, the ones that I show, you know, in the channel list. Uh, he's done this on his R107. He's got a couple of them. He's got a parts car and a car he's putting together and he's had one that he put together. Anybody who knows him, you know, he, you know, he had that car stolen after all that work. Ugh, it's just terrible. He's already done this on his and, you know, I'm quite familiar with the basics. You know, this is a different vehicle. Okay, I get it. It's not the, it's, he didn't use a 560. But it's the same thing, you know, we've got all these, I think there's probably 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, ooh, that one's missing, 6, 7, missing, 8, 9, and 10, yes, 10. Let's get started probably by removing the bottom. I think that's the first thing you would want to do, because I don't think you got to remove all the carpet. You just have to peel it so you can get to it. Same thing over here, someone else already did this. One thing I noticed, that there's one missing here. Like I said, they're all 10 millimeters. I'm using a wobbler, so it makes it just a little bit easier on this. And that's exactly what it looks like, just a, just a nut, or a bolt, I should say. Somebody's done this before for whatever reason. I wish I had the history of this vehicle. So you guys want to see just how anal I am? I mean, I, I should show you. You see that? So they're all lined up in the way that I took it apart. All right, let's look behind here. I know there's gotta be something over here. 
There sure is. One's missing. So we got another one missing, you guys. Back in here now. So there's that one there, right above that. And then there's another one that's right behind the tray right here, but it's missing, just so you know. All right, that takes care of all those. Let's go to the other side. There's this high density foam. Still in pretty good shape. It's flexible still. One, two, three missing bolts. There's one right there. Nice and easy. Now there's one more down there at the bottom. All right. The next one to it is empty. And then the next one we have one, and then that one's missing. You see it's loose. <laughs> it's great to have a boroscope where you can look back there and see what's going on. You know that's not a Mercedes thing. You know, that's like a, probably a wood screw. Nah, it's a, it's a metal screw, but still. So now, what do we get? Oh, look at that. Look at that, you guys. I think we're just about out. Now, it's just a matter of coaxing it out of here. Just like that. This is for my buddy Mike. When he opened up one of his vehicles, you know, like the parts car, all of this was gone. So that's the spare tire. You can see it looks pretty darn good. I mean, there's some wear, obviously, uh, where the tire would vibrate and kind of remove some of the paint. Uh, it looks like the way that it's done is probably primer paint and then they painted the inside of this afterwards that's what it looks like to me now that little hole way down there would be using this right here and this thing has three little holes in it it has this double lip on it, so it has to fit on that lip to be right there we go so on the left side of the fuel tank we have two 13 millimeter bolts. And on the right side, we also have two 13 millimeter bolts. Can you see them in there? There they are. For right now, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave them threaded. Four bolts are done. This is a 19 millimeter. <laughs> that was difficult. I think I might want to get a new one of these as well. We come to a screeching halt in the video to stop because I did not realize about that return line, right? We forgot, I forgot about it, I don't know. But it's got a clamp on this side, which of course there's no way you're, well, you might be able to get to it from underneath, we'll see. But that is right there. So this is the right rear of the vehicle. This clamp, you can get to it, no problem, from here. So I've cleaned this all up. I thought I should take a, my borescope and look up in there. And as you guys can see, the inside of this looks just fine. If I was just any other guy, I would say, don't worry about it and just put things back together. You don't need to take out your tank. That's what I feel. But I wouldn't be Tony Live TV if I didn't do that for you. So I was planning on doing this anyways, and why not? As you can see, you can't put a socket on here. There's no doubt about it. Now, there's a guy, you know, the media uh, Mercedes source. He has a tool, which he calls a tool, but it's just a bolt, a bolt with two nuts. 
basically. All you have to do is make sure you grip this thing and use that. But I would think like a long pipe coming all the way down <laughs> so you can get a pipe wrench on this thing and a big long breaker bar is the way to do it if you're gonna leave it inside the tank. I mean inside the vehicle, the tank. If you can, if you can move it enough. There's other ways you could take this out. You see you've got a big old hole, right? And the threads on the part that hits the tank isn't to way out to the edge. So really you could do a right hand drill bit that would fit in there. That's one way of doing it, but it might break the drill bit. Uh, another way is possibly even an easy out or even, you know, the, uh, just a bolt, like I said, and two nuts or a long pipe that would come down that where you could do the same thing, a couple of uh, nuts to tighten against this thing. But let's face it, you've got all this whole edge around here. So if you can move it enough to get a socket on it, that's the proper way of doing it. There's two more little screws we've got to deal with. So you have to take your top off, your hard top, and open up the back. And these two little screws right here need to come out. There we go. And that's what it looks like here. flat fender washer and a sheet metal screw. Now the other side. All right, there's that one. You know, getting these things out or getting these things back in is gonna be a lot tougher. So we've got all these done, all those done, that thing out. But what we do have to do yet is right here. So this electrical, our sensor for our level. There we go. Does this look like it's 37 years old? No way. No way. You know, I don't know who installed this or anything. This was definitely installed correctly. No doubt about that. And that's why it looks so clean with the boroscope looking up underneath. You know, it looks very clean. There's, like I said, I, there's probably no reason I need to change this. Now, I'm, I'm going to move it up here to see if it actually can move enough, you know, for, for anyone to really do much. I don't see that you could, still couldn't get, you know, I'm trying different things here to try to push it up farther up there, but I can't really do it. So it's really an offset of the body, you know, more than anything. I was just curious, you know, if you could move it. And you can, as you can see, but it's not going to really be enough to get a socket on there. So this is what Mike did, is he took this thing out. It can just barely clear it, but you're not going to be able to lift the tank enough to be able to clear it, I don't think. Maybe, but why fight it, right? To here. Even when you get it loose, that thing doesn't want to move. <laughs> Yeah, you're not seeing anything, but that's tough. I'm gonna go ahead and take those hoses off. All right, I've got these two disconnected over here. You can see it's nice and loose. And I have these two disconnected. And I was thinking, you know, well, why not put a heat gun to it? But you know, there could be fumes in here, or you know, you don't, you don't know. You just gotta keep wiggling it, keep pulling it. I see it coming. It's almost there. All right. I think I can get it. See? Oh, you can't really see it, but that's all right. There we go. I can at least sit it down like this. You see how this has got like ribs on here? And this is like, it's more of those harder, you know, hard plastic. So I don't think you have to worry about taking this apart if yours is like this, because there's no way I want to take that apart. It's pretty much fused on there. It's good to go. The, the rest of it feels the way it should. So I am going to just take this rather than spending the money of buying new hose and just setting this off to the side like this. There we go. All right, I've disconnected two more wire ties and that's to that sensor that's sitting right inside there. 
You know, I'm thinking I didn't even have to remove these because the way that you get to that is from the other side. Let's go take a look. Yeah, that little cover right there. There we go. Aha! See that plug over there? This cover is like brand new. There we go. So you'd only think that all you have to do is just remove your cap, start yanking on this tank, you know, pulling it towards the left side though, obviously you have to get this neck through. But I say leave that rubber grommet in there because you want to protect the side of your vehicle. And I have a camera there so I can watch that at the same time, make sure that I'm not in any danger. Uh, I forgot to turn my mic on here. <laughs> so you're not hearing all the clunks and clanks, but I can guarantee you it was not that difficult to uh, pull out. You know, that was it. So let's now take a closer look at the tank. The tank. <laughs> the underside of the tank, it's really getting hot. Maybe it's gonna explode. The gases and everything get just right. So I'm gonna vent it. The reason why I have this is because what I found is that I still can't get my socket in here because the rubber is placed for the body. So this was actually installed correctly. You know, a lot of guys wouldn't have done that correct. You can see, you know, the thickness of this. I, I could have bought one that's a little bit thinner. If I put this on here, I mean, I can stretch some of this and try to get it back, but I really can't get on it. Um, so I'm gonna remove this. Now, make note, do you see that arrow? I'm gonna assume they did it right. And that arrow goes that way. But it's offset. Normally, I bet you the majority of people would take this and position it perfectly in the middle here. But then you wouldn't be lining up with the hole in the vehicle. I'm going to mark this with some paint and then I'm going to remove it. Right, and then we'll just. I'll put a little arrow on there even. Right, so that's where the arrow goes. We have, we're marked on all corners. Now, can I remove it without hurting anything? Oh boy, that is on there good. This guy did a good job, very good job. Very good indeed. I, this is the reason why I put it out in the sun like this. Perfect. Perfect. It's, it is actually kind of hot to the hand. You know, even if you could get that in there, when you spin it, you're gonna end up tearing this up. So it's not worth it. It really is not worth it. There we go, just like that. Yeah, that's how I bet you the majority of people would do it. Just like that. And that would be wrong. Cause this thing fit really good in the hole. Now you can get on that. So I'll be trying to remove it with this Makita. I don't want to put my socket on there bare. I'm going to put some grease along here and the, I just don't want to mark it up or spark it. Just like that. I want to also point out that I have a fire extinguisher. Actually, I have a couple of them. So I keep these right by me, right next to me. Matter of fact, but of course, if this thing were to explode, my face is right here anyways. I mean, I'm wearing goggles and everything, but that doesn't mean a thing. Grease on hand. This is a 46 millimeter. There we go. 
that's it. I can take the rest of it off by hand. You know, removing this tank was easy, you guys. It's, it's this, if I wasn't recording it, this is only a three to maybe three hour total in and out, I think. You know, this thing, I can see right through it, no problem. It's dirty. There's some sediment, but, but basically this thing, you can see it right there. It's pretty clean. Just like I figured. You know what? We didn't, we didn't scar anything up. It looks brand new. And you know, I didn't even scar this up. You see how easy that was, you guys? I mean, come on. Why would you want to spend $75? Not that there's anything wrong with that, but why would you want to use a, a, a nut or a bolt and a couple of nuts and try to fit a wrench up inside that cavity, you know, and get this on and off? You saw how easy it was, piece of cake. And really, I, you don't need an impact. You could have done this without an impact. The impact just makes it so I don't have to really hold the tank. You know, this uh, tank is super, super clean, right? It looks new on the outside and it looks new on the inside. That is the bottom of the tank. And that's how clean it is. Those little marks is from me probing it. What I'm gonna do now, I think, is I'm just gonna go get a gallon or two of diesel and I'm just gonna slosh it all around inside here and just, you know, if there's anything in there, hopefully I get it on out, but you can see with that little vein plastic cover and all that, there's nothing gonna get down in there. That's the reason why that screen was so clean. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and clean this and then reinstall that strainer. So I went out and I got a gallon or two, a couple of gallons, I guess, of diesel. And the first thing I wanted to do, <laughs> I hate those tops. That thing pissed me off. They do not work, no matter what. You have to hold one thing and push on another. Nah, I hate it. But I went ahead and put in diesel, and the first thing I did was do it upside down. So this is the top I'm cleaning for, or just sloshing around. Yeah, sorry about this, uh, environmentalists. I was not thinking you should put down a plastic tarp. So then I flipped it back over so we can get that back, the underneath side. Uh, you know, that's where the sediment and everything will go the most. And I did that a couple of times, and this is like the first one. You can see there's a lot of sediment in the bottom of that, but still fairly clean. And then, you know, at the end there, this is what it ended up like. Hardly anything in here, you know. I mean, it's perfectly clean. This is a before. And this is an after. Yeah, it's cleaner. It's not perfect, but you know, it's 37 years old, guys. Can you believe that? Yeah, this is actually a genuine Mercedes. You see those part number up there? This is an original tank, and it looks that good. 37 years. Now that's the bottom of the tank inside that container. I mean, that's the most important part. It was hard for me to get that, this camera, up enough because that thing comes all the way down. You know, it's made, it's a Venturi. Well, now it's time to put it all back together. And that's what I'm gonna do right now. So here's a little condensed version of the manual. That's the manual number that I'm looking at, 47-100, removing and installing the fuel tank. And there's a link to this manual, the one that I'm using at the bottom of the description. So the main things that we need to worry about here is the sensor. If you're replacing your sensor, it's 39 Newton meters. And don't forget that new O-ring. And the strainer is also 39 Newton meters and we're not gonna forget that O-ring. The feed line that goes down to your pumps is 28 Newton meters. And we have four bolts, one, uh, two on each side, the left and the right. You remember we removed those to remove the tank? Well, those are 21 Newton meters. Now here you'll notice at the bottom here about the fuel strainer, and it says model 107. Now remember, this is written 
years and years and years ago, but it tells you right there to use an M18 bolt with a locking nut in place of the screw connection. Tighten that locking nut and then unscrew your strainer, okay? <laughs> your strainer is 39 Newton meters and your feed line is 28, so you should be able to take this out. Now I can tell you what I've done in the past. Uh, a, uh, a guy that I knew many, many years ago, that's kind of why I got a little bit interested in these kind of vehicles. I think his was like a 450 or something, I don't know. But he had a similar issue. And what he did is he used a plug Right, an M18 plug, and then he took that locking nut right there, and he actually just flipped that thing upside down, so it acted like teeth. And then he cranked on that, and then he put his socket on that plug and removed it. And another thing you can do is those type of, of uh, lock washers and a couple of nuts or, you know, whatever. It's, but basically, I would like to have a nice long plug or just take it out. It really was not that difficult. It really wasn't. Let's get to putting this strainer in and this tank back in the vehicle. So here's the strainer and the part number for that strainer. That's the cover, that little rubber piece that goes there. There's the part number for that. And then this is the new strainer. So what I've done is I've taken some isotopal alcohol and I wiped all this. I made sure there's no burrs or anything. And then I just lightly coated right on the very top here with some petroleum jelly. And then on this, all I'm doing is putting on a piece of tape so nothing falls inside. The manual says 39 Newton meters, so that's what I've got. I've also put a little bit of grease on there, just like I did when I took it off. 39 Newton meters. Well, 39.1. I'm gonna leave that on there for now. And I'm gonna clean this with isotopal alcohol. So why the isotopal alcohol? Well, that's because we've gotta put this rubber piece back. And you don't wanna have grease. And I'm doing the same thing to the back side of this. This stuff works great. Got to put it on both surfaces. We've got our lines here, so we know right where it goes, even the outline of where the circle is. And now we wait. All right, so it's been about 15 minutes or so. It's supposed to be just tacky, and it is. And remember, I've got my little line up, my arrow. So that's got to get lined up, and our corners need to get lined up. So, and once this goes down, it doesn't want, it's not going to move, so. <laughs> that should be just about it. That's it. Now I'm going to let that set because I'm going to go see my daughter. She's in a play and on a big stage and I've got to get out of here. So I'm going to let this dry and I'll come back and I'll take care of the install later. Well, it's the next morning. I enjoyed the show. Wow, that stuff is awesome. No doubt about it. I'm going to clean up a little bit of the paint. I put it in the exact same spot. Uh, just like I said before, whoever did this did it right. Well, Mercedes did it, so... That's the reason why this is right. Most people would not put that there. 
you would probably line this up with this. But this is the proper way of doing it. It's all tacked down, so let's install this tank. So what I've done is, you know, that's that one in the rear there. I've wiped everything down. And I've also taken the electrical and I put that back up. So there is the nozzle area. And I would recommend that you put this back in here prior. Uh, this is the old one. I purchased the new one. And here's the part number for this grommet. Unfortunately, my new one's not here yet, but I'd rather use the old one for the install anyways. All right, this thing's quite, actually was difficult to put in because on this back side here, uh, it's the metal in here is like they had a hole and then they punched it in. So it's wrapped, right? The metal is wrapped and there, the edge is on the inside. But this boot is made for that ledge to fit inside of the boot and the body. So it locks in. It's quite nice. Now, th this is why I'm replacing mine. You can see it's split right here. Just like before, guys, we'll just feed it up. Feed it through the hole. There we go. Not that bad. Just as easy, guys. Now, you have to make sure to get this thing underneath there, though. Otherwise, you're not going to get it in. So, it has to fit like that. There we go. Push it with it. You see how I got that pushing? Good. All right, we're lining up nice. Beautiful. Probably notice these little blue wires that are coming out of there, and I'll explain that in a minute. There we go. Almost there. All right, so remember those two little holes <laughs> that are from the other side there? Well, I just put a wire through it so I can go through the hole that's on the clamp. I can just get through that right there. That'll help us line up on the other side. Oh, there we go. So that's the reason right there that I did that. See how it lines right up? All right. things all the way in there and then I'm going to go ahead and get this one in first I've cleaned these terminals, and this is dielectric grease. You can see that little rubber disc there. It needs to go up underneath, like that. And then you have this false pin that this thing has to fit into. There's uh, this cover here, and that cover has three part numbers on it. So I'm going to list all three. It's got a notch on one side. So I'm guessing you put that notch where that cable goes in, right there. Just like that. There we go. There we go. Look how bright that is. Let's make it softer. <laughs> there we go. Push that up as high as you can, which is not, as you can see, just like before, you know, 
You can pull it back that far. That's as far back as you can get it. I've already connected that one that was underneath, you know, that uh, return line. Just to make sure nothing leaked out of the tank. It's dry, but I let it hang overnight and everything, so. Here's another dead giveaway that it's a genuine Mercedes. See the ribs here and here? On the aftermarket ones, at least all the ones I've seen, this is just a bent pipe, right? Because this will cost more because it's specific. Twenty one Newton meters. Twenty one point nine, actually. Twenty one point three, believe it or not. Twenty one point two. There we go. Twenty one point two. I need to get it underneath this thing first. There's a total of 12 bolts to the bottom here, two on each side and then 10 across the top. And you guys remember that I was missing a total of six bolts. I purchased them, they're not here yet. They won't be here until the middle of the week from what I understand. Just looking close, there, that looks good. Looking good. Make sure that everything's in its spot. This one I gotta get lined up. There we go. You know, for now, I'm putting this on here. I don't think it's right, but that's what they had. I can't really find anything on that specifically. So now we need to get this ledge here under or between this. There's a gap there. You can just stick it in the gap. Until you line up your holes right about there we go. All right, I'm going to finish doing those. I hope you guys don't mind if I don't put this in right now because I don't have my new battery yet and this gives me a lot more access and you know I'm still going to be needing to have this open. I'll just throw this down though just to put it away just like that. Looking good. All right, you guys, I think that that pretty much covers this. Um, I have a new line for that right there, and I will install that when I do the fuel pumps. That's the next video, is the rebuilding of that whole fuel pump assembly. So for now, I'm going to say that this is done. We went ahead, we changed the strainer on that fuel tank and everything and it's good to go and I'll be doing the fuel pumps on the next one and then we'll be doing a first start so join me on that first start and for now thanks again for watching